does eating fat elicit the same response as directly infusing saturated fat via intravenous or directly treating cells, bathing them with saturated fat? So let's, in order to look at that, I just want to highlight a few studies. So, okay, the first study is one by Volk, V-O-L-K, Volk et al., and it was published in 2014 in a journal PLUS One. And when I say PLOS, I'm not saying plus, like a plus sign or addition, but P-L-O-S, PLOS One, 2014, Volk et al. This is probably the single best study that looks at the idea of saturated fat in the diet and then explores that effect in the plasma. So let me just... Before getting into that study, let me just emphasize what I'm why I'm discussing this this way. The the idea so I've shown you evidence that if a cell directly gets saturated fat, it is capable of causing insulin resistance uniquely more so than other fats are via TLR4 as I explained at the beginning of the conversation. Now, th th then does that mean that eating saturated fat will increase the amount of saturated fats in my blood? That is the question that we want to know. Does eating more saturated fat increase the saturated fats that are actually being circulated around? Because if so, that could explain a mechanism. So this study by Volk et al. was fascinating because it actually took people through a stepwise increase in saturated fats. And so it had this, this very fascinating experimental model where the amount of carbohydrates and the amount of saturated fats was being changed. And so it would go in this stepwise direction up or down. So, and, and fantastic changes. I mean, it would be multiples more saturated fat in, in, at the end or the beginning of the stepwise change. And you would think if dietary saturated fat directly connects to or directly leads to increased plasma saturated fat, well then as they stepwise increase the saturated fat, you should see a stepwise increase, if they stepwise increase the dietary saturated fat, to be more precise, you should see a stepwise increase in plasma or blood circulating saturated fats. And you didn't. It was totally a flat line. Even though they were eating two or three times more saturated fat, which is substantial, it did not change their plasma saturated fat levels at all. They stayed, they, they actually went down by about half with the onset of this ketogenic diet, and then it stayed down that low, even as saturated fat changed. So the stepwise changes, the study suggests that the body really has an adaptation that even as you're eating more, the body is clearly handling it, um, where you're not seeing these saturated fats hit the bloodstream like you'd expect. It could be just that they're getting burned. It could be that they are getting desaturated. That happens very readily where you take saturated fats and you actually desaturate and elongate. So it's possible for the saturated fats to turn into, actually to turn into oleic acid, which is the main fat in olive oil, and then get stored in, in fat cells or something, which is fine. All long chain fats are capable of being stored. So that's not inherently a problem. Um, remember, because the main thing we're looking at here is the role or the degree to which dietary saturated fat can increase plasma saturated fat. Because if we can show that, then there's a mechanism to explain that saturated fats could cause insulin resistance. But I just highlighted the study and I encourage you to look it up, Volk et al. in PLOS1 plus one in 2014, where it looks at the stepwise change in dietary saturated fat. And it had no effect at changing plasma or blood saturated fat levels.